at a disadvantage. What does our judiciary do? In aiding, uh, in, 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 in solving or helping resolve these matters of corruption, Madam Speaker, the processes are lengthy. You know, somebody that has been accused, Madam Speaker, of corruption will take ages before their cases are heard and determined. And of course, they are going to buy their way. They are going to compromise even investigations, Madam Speaker, because even the kind of bail they get is very friendly. Somebody is stealing, say, 100 million, given a bail, you know, bail terms of about 2 million, Madam Speaker. So people are even more than happy to steal, pay bail, buy whoever that it is that you have to buy, and this is what has caused the frustration in our people, Madam Speaker, leading to the events of the last two weeks. Madam Speaker, our laws are also weak. The day before yesterday, I think on Tuesday, uh, we hosted the CS uh, Health, Madam Speaker, the Committee of Health, where I'm a member. And, you know, we wanted to know what NHIF is doing to see to it that there are no fraudulent claims, Madam Speaker. And where they are there, what do they do in order for them to be able to recover the funds so lost? And Madam Speaker, we were very frustrated that the law does not allow NHIF, for example, even after they have discovered that a, a claim was fraudulent, to take such a fraudster to court, Madam Speaker. That they leave it to investigative agencies to look at it and take this matter to court. And I mean, that is frustrating. Because if I catch you stealing some bananas from my chamber, Madam Speaker, I should just go take you to the police, I mean, report you to the police station. Then you defend your case. The only thing I should be asked to do is to, is the burden of proof that that is, should be laid on me. But look at what NHIF is saying, that they cannot be able to take a fraudulent uh, um, uh, medical facility, I mean, a medical facility that is placing a fraudulent claim to court, Madam Speaker, that they have to rely on another institution and investigative one. These are the things that have made Kenyans, you know, uh, that have frustrated Kenyans, and that is why, Madam Speaker, we find ourselves where we were. The other thing is waste of public funds. I've been asking myself, what happened to the Volkswagen Passat that uh, former President Uhuru Kenyatta, when he was finance minister, introduced and decided that that was going to, was going to be the vehicles that were going to be used by public officers, Madam Speaker. How did we get back to VH, to Prados, for public, for, for public officers, Madam Speaker? We must start we must go back to living by what we tell Kenyans. Let us see CSS in Volkswagen Passats, Madam Speaker, as was done that time in order for us to save on public funds, Madam Speaker. The other day I was listening to CS Courier, and he was saying that he was very, very, very frustrated and very concerned going to Mombasa, finding some staff Having traveled all the way from Nairobi to Mombasa to receive him, some stuff he did not need. Then when he asked why, he was told that somebody had not had uh, an opportunity to get per diem for quite some time, and that is why they had been sent there. Madam Speaker, really? That uh, uh, all we care is that we see to it that uh, some staffers get per diem, even when we do not need their services? These are things that we need to look into and, of course, make corrections where we need to make corrections, Madam Speaker. Now, many colleagues here have talked about uh, Chief Administrative Secretaries, Madam Speaker. Of course, I know that uh, we don't have any one of them serving. But, Madam Speaker, there are rumors that uh, there are plans to reinstate them. Madam Speaker, do we need CASs? What is it that they can do? What is it that they, we need them for? What can they do? What are they supposed to do that PSS cannot do, Madam Speaker? These are some of the things that we need to forget and forget completely. There should not even be anything like that because it has been determined as illegal, an illegal position, Madam Speaker, so that we save on public funds, uh, Madam Speaker. Many people have mentioned the office of the first lady, the office of the second lady, the office of the Prime Cabinet Secretary and his spouse also, Madam Speaker. And I'm happy 
that His Excellency the President has pronounced himself on the closure of these offices, Madam Speaker. And I say this knowing very well, because in Kiswahili they say, Yamungu ni mengi, hayajulikani. Knowing very well that I can also be President tomorrow. And my wife will be a first lady. But I do not want my wife, even if I become president, to have an office funded by the exchequer, Madam Speaker. Because we need to save on, 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 on expenditure, Madam Speaker. And I'm happy that the president has since dealt with that matter and pronounced himself, Madam Speaker. We may need to discuss on whether we need a prime cabinet secretary and an office for that matter, Mr. Madam Speaker, for this particular um, uh, position. Recently, after the floods, Madam Speaker, there were demolitions. But these demolitions were profiled. They only happened in low-income uh, you know, in uh, those, those areas where the low-income earners live, Madam Speaker, and this was under the guise of clearing riparian land, Madam Speaker. But go to places like Lovington. You will even see some, uh, some uh, river courses, uh, Madam Speaker, interfered with in order for them, in order for somebody to create room to erect buildings along, in fact, next to the river, not just on repair, uh, riparian land, but next to the river. There was no demolition happening there while we were demolishing um, settlements of those of the poor, the, the, the poorest of the poor, Madam Speaker. And this is what has caused dissatisfaction, Madam Speaker. The law must be seen to be applied equally, uh, Madam Speaker, to those that have and those that do not have, Madam Speaker. I'm surprised how time moves, how fast time moves. Uh, so, Madam Speaker, this is something that uh, uh, has caused a lot of um, uh, problems with our people. Madam Speaker, the CSCs have abandoned the president. None of them, very few of them, are helping the president in this crisis, Madam Speaker. We do not know what is happening. I've been wondering as a person, is it because... Maybe they did not appreciate that time when they went for a cabinet meeting late and they were locked outside the gate. Madam Speaker, maybe that cost them some demotivation that maybe demoralized them. And I would want to ask the president uh, because he must rein in this year's, but maybe to do it in a way in future that does not uh, um, see them being ridiculed or see them looking like uh, school children who came uh, uh, late to school, Madam Speaker. So we do not know whether they have the right morale, but this should be looked into. Uh, needless to say, of how they pretend, you know, big people cannot answer calls from us. Some of them do not even honor our committee meetings. Madam Speaker, these are things that we need to think about. Um, uh, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, uh, PSs. Do we need all these PSs? Those are questions that we need to ask themselves, ourselves, Madam Speaker. Do we need all of them? What is it that they do that uh, cannot be done without them? Madam Speaker, because my time is running out, we need to rethink about CDF, especially the bursaries given by members of the National Assembly. Somebody raised a very pertinent question. Why do we need to give members of the National Assembly money to give to parents, to pay to public schools. Why don't we channel those funds directly to these public schools, Madam Speaker? Maybe we can talk about CDF as far as uh, development is concerned. That is something we can discuss. But really, we give uh, members of, the, of parliament money uh, to go, you know, give back to government? I mean, what logic is there, Madam Speaker? I mean, we can use what we are calling means testing. Let us use means testing for, in order for us to assess the needs of every other student so that we send these funds directly to the institutions of learning. We do not have, uh, and we have done very well with the new funding model at the university level. We can cascade these downwards to secondary schools, Madam Speaker. We should not just do the things, that, uh, things the way they have been done all this time. And finally, I dare to say, this nation could be under a curse. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I say that, and this is somehow spiritual. Because, Madam Speaker, a father can curse a child. In the same breath, Madam Speaker, 
A president can curse a country. A mother can curse a child. What am I trying to say, Madam Speaker? Last year, sometimes last year, Northlands, owned by the Kenyatas, was attacked. Sheep stolen. Bad things happened. The police never did anything. And that was associated with some leaders, Madam Speaker. Kenyatta may not have been a saint. President Kenyatta Jomo may not have been a saint. But Madam Speaker, he was the first president of this country. Madam Speaker, he can cast this country in his, from his grave. And this is something that we should take very seriously, Madam Speaker. There have been claims, Madam Speaker, yes. we do not know how true they are. Senator Nyoto, there were some ground rules laid before, and I think you wish to abide by them if you were well advised by the majority leader. We, we, Madam Speaker, we said we are just reflecting, and if we want to know how we can heal this nation. So, Madam Speaker, I think these are things that we need to look into. When the, late, the former president, Uhuru Kenyatta, claims, rightly or wrongly, that he's not getting his benefits, Madam Speaker, that's another curse that can befall us. When we are told that uh, security has been withdrawn from the First Lady, Madam Speaker, this can also cause a curse. So, what do, you, what do I suggest that we do, Madam Senator Speaker? Nyoto, Let us... Senator Nyoto, the guidance I have given you is we were to avoid names in the debates so that you do not okay. personalize. Okay. That was the ground rule that was given. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Then I'm, I'm well guided. Uh, one minute uh, for you to finish. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting, Madam Speaker, because I love this country. And I cry. And I cry for this country, Madam Speaker. Can we approach the people that we, I have mentioned? Can we apologize to them? Can we seek that they lift any curse that they may be having against this nation, Madam Speaker? Because we must speak, uh, Madam Speaker, let us approach these people. Say, tell them if we, are, if, we, if, we, if we wronged you, we are sorry. If you have spelt any curse on this nation, we persuade you. We beseech you, please lift any such curse that may have been here because we want our nation to heal, Madam Speaker, and we must do everything, whether, whatever we do, whoever we talk to, but our nation must heal. Madam Speaker, I support and thank you for even the extension of time. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Catherine Muma, she's not here. Senator Asige. Thank you.